Thank you for watching and welcome to this week's video. Uh, this week we look at Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio or just more simply Caravaggio's painting of the calling of Saint Matthew. This painting is rather large, it's over three meters in the height and by three meters in width and it's hanging in the church of San Luigi dei Francesi in Rome. Uh, so bang in the center of Rome actually. Um, in the Contarini Chapel, so it's actually when you walk into the church, it's on your left hand side. And the painting recalls the moment when Matthew, uh, the author of today's Gospel, the 5th of November 2017, was called by Jesus to follow him. And it is an absolutely stunning and beautiful painting. Um, so first of all, who was Caravaggio? So Il Caravaggio, after the name of his hometown, was a painter and an engraver of religious subjects and genre scenes. He led a short and tempestuous uh, life. So he was basically born in 1578 and died in 1630, so, which made him just 52 years old when, when he died. So rather young. Well, at the time, it wasn't that young, probably. Um, but he was an arrogant man and very rebellious, and he loved taking part in brawls and sword fights assaulting young girls and even killing a young man in a fight in 1606, uh, which then led him to flee to Rome, uh, where then subsequently again he was frequently imprisoned uh, and it affected his work because he was unable to work with great regularity. But then when he did produce work, it was absolutely uh, amazing work. And I think he's best known in his works for his dramatic use of light and his close-up and intimate compositions, of which we'll talk a bit later, are unique. Looking more closely at the composition itself, and first of all, let's look at the figure of Jesus. We can see a thin halo uh, over his head, and Chris is just after entering the room from what we imagine is a door at the far right of the scene, but it's not depicted in the painting, but there's probably a door there to the far right. And he is completely hidden by the figure of Saint Peter. We then see his raised arm and his face in profile. And actually, when you look at the hand and the figure, uh, that is reminiscent of God's gesture in Michelangelo's creation of Adam uh, in, the, in the Sistine Chapel, uh, which was painted, well, about 100 years before this was painted, uh, in about 1508. And of course, the Sistine Chapel would have had a great impact on young Caravaggio when he came to Rome. And you can see that hand is exactly like, uh, like God's hand uh, in uh, the Sistine Chapel. Um, and Jesus is basically asking Matthew to follow him and become one of his disciples and there's no room for doubt. What we can see as well is that we see a nice sort of profile face of Jesus and the hand is clear. But the foot, when you look at the foot, the foot is actually slightly uh, twisted. So if you look closely, you'll notice that while Jesus' torso and head are pointed in towards the room, his foot is pointed right. Uh, which sort of suggests that his foot is pointing towards the door. So Jesus is not waiting for Matthew. Matthew has been chosen, Jesus has asked, and basically Christ is showing it's time to go. And that we can see in Christ's foot. The second main figure in the composition, of course, is Saint Matthew. Some scholars have suggested that actually there is a bit of controversy as to who St. Matthew is in the painting because it's not really clear which man is actually Matthew. Some scholars have suggested that it's the man hunched over the coins, noting that the bearded fellow to his right appears to be pointing his way. However, the most popular interpretation is that uh, the bearded pointer is actually Matthew himself. So with his finger pointing gently to in his chest, asking himself the question, uh, Jesus, are you, are you pointing at me? Are you calling me? And this theory would also explain why the radiant light shines down on his face uh, to show that actually he's chosen by the light of heavens. 
Um, so, but I think this again is typical of Caravaggio is to have that slight ambiguity. And when asked, because this question was even asked at the time, Caravaggio never really responded to saying like, oh no, that of course is Matthew. Uh, no, he did slightly leave it sort of open-handed. And I personally have to say, uh, of course, I do think the bearded man in the middle is is, is Saint Matthew, but that ambiguity is actually uh, rather nice because it actually shows that Matthew was really dealing with 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 money and would have been hunched over coins uh, the whole time. Other facts which are worth noting are, of course, the clothes. As you can see, the tax collectors and the bankers, including Saint Matthew. Uh, have these lavish clothes and probably of silk brocades, gold thread, uh, and all of that. And when you look at Jesus and Saint Peter standing in front of him, yes, it's it's very basic uh, clothing. Um, so that's one of the first things worth noting. The other thing is that, of course, this painting has been hanging in the same place since it was commissioned for the last 410 years in the same chapel uh, on display. Uh, which can't be said of many paintings because they do tend to, to move around. Um, worth noting as well is that Caravaggio was actually only second choice uh, for painting this painting. So initially another painter was commissioned uh, to, to do the paintings in the chapel. Uh, but when that painter pulled out, then basically Caravaggio was reeled in. And this was basically his big break, uh, which, is, which is really uh, good. And then thirdly, I'd say just to uh, close off uh, the compositional and, and technical aspects of this painting uh, is that this, of course, is painted on canvas. This is oiled on canvas. Uh, and at the time, it was a very radical choice uh, because in the churches in Rome and especially in side chapels in churches in Rome, usually the paintings were done uh, as frescoes. Uh, and here Caravaggio decided to paint on a canvas rather than a fresco, which was the usual technique for decorating the side walls of, of, of chapels. Um, so yes, so I think this is, uh, the artist imposed a lengthy and tiring sittings to his models to get the expression and gestures that he wanted. Uh, so he would have basically had uh, real figures standing next to him and in front of him that he would paint uh, in, in quite a lifelike manner uh, onto the canvas. So all these people depicted here would be actual uh, figures that would have been walking around uh, in Rome at the time. But of course, he, the great master of, of, of light and, and dark, would have added that sort of uh, dramatic light and dark element. And, and just to close off on the light, you can see, of course, the main source of light coming in uh, at the top falling on St. Matthew's head, but there must be a second window as well because you see at the back of St. Peter's cloak and also the all the other figures basically, they actually get lit from a different light source. In conclusion, I also would like to point out uh, that Pope Francis, this is actually one of Pope Francis's uh, most preferred paintings and in an interview dated from 2013, uh, he gave a touching interpretation of this painting. And I'm basically quoting here. He says, Pope Francis says, that finger of Jesus pointing at Matthew, that is me. I feel like him, like Matthew. It is the gesture of Matthew that strikes me. He holds on to his money as if to say, no, 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 not me. No, this money is mine. Here, this is me, a sinner on whom the Lord has turned his gaze. And this is what I said when they asked me if I would accept my election as pontiff. I am a sinner, but I trust in the infinite mercy and patience of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I accept in the spirit of penance. So I hope you very much enjoyed this week's video and we look forward to seeing you next week in next week's video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.